Hello everyone, welcome to your Monday morning devotional. Recently, we've gone through the painful experience of having to withdraw from one of our members because he refused to repent from sin and had left the assembly. This caused many members to ask questions about their own conduct and attitude towards this and others whom the church has had to discipline. In answer to these questions, I offer the following guidelines in order to help churches deal with disfellowship members. First, don't be surprised. Jesus repeatedly stated the idea that the road to eternal life was narrow and not many would follow it. He said, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. We can be saddened that some brethren choose to leave the church for a variety of reasons, but let us not be surprised. People have done this from the very beginning. For example, Demas in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. And people will continue to do so until the end. Jesus warned us about this. Secondly, do what the Bible commands. When people are removed from the church because of unfaithfulness or unrepented sin, we're doing what God is commanding us to do. The Apostle Paul says, remove the wicked man from among yourselves, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13. Not to do so would make us as disobedient as those who are being disfellowshipped. Number three, withdraw means withdraw. The Bible also tells us not to associate with any so-called brother if he should be an immoral person not even to eat with such a one, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. And, if anyone does not obey our instructions in this letter, take special note of that man and do not associate with him, so that he may be put to shame. And yet, do not regard him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. So, disfellowshipment is corrective discipline and is done in order to bring people back to their senses and back to God. If we do not obey God in this, we push these people further away from Him and ourselves. Number four, be careful. If this experience teaches us anything, it should teach us how easily we can be trapped by sin. Let us, therefore, be careful to avoid occasions of temptations and ready to acknowledge and abandon the sins we often stumble into so that it doesn't master us and thus separate us from God and the church. And finally, pray for one another. Jesus continually prayed to God on behalf of the apostles so that they would not be overtaken by Satan. We need to pray for others when they are faithful rather than start praying for them only after they have fallen. I know that it's not easy to see someone that you love suddenly abandon the church. It causes pain discouragement, and confusion. But I believe that these feelings are part of the cost of our discipleship to our Lord Jesus Christ. I encourage you, therefore, to obey the Bible in this matter. Love and pray for the brother or sister who has left. Be careful in your own life and continue to trust in our Lord to bring the rest of us safely home. One thing is sure, however, no one is more eager to save your family or friends than God is, and no one has suffered more rejection than he has. And yet, because of his great love and patience, God continues to offer his forgiveness and salvation to all who would come. That's our message for this week. I'm Mike Mazzalongo for BibleTalk.tv. I pray that God bless you and keep you and yours. Discussion questions. Number one. What type of sin would qualify a person for disfellowshipment? What type would not? Number two, if you were sent to speak to a brother or sister who was disfellowshipped, what would you say to win them back? Why this approach? Number three, can someone be disfellowshipped for not attending worship services? Why yes or no?